Our Gospel reading this morning comes from the 22nd chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 15th verse. Listen now for God's word to us. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him, that is Jesus, in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, when, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then Jesus said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A young lady was soaking up the rays on a Florida beach when a little boy in his swimming trunks and carrying a towel came up to her and asked, do you believe in God? Well, she was a little bit startled by this question and she thought for a second, and then she said, why, yes, I do. Then with great sternness, he said, do you go to church every Sunday? Again, her answer was, yes, yes, I go to church. And then his next question was, do you read the Bible and pray every day? She answered, yes, but by now her curiosity was piqued. The little lad looked at her, gave a sigh of relief, and said, Will you hold my quarter while I go swimming? <laughs> this little guy's long list of straightforward questions gave him an assurance that this lady could be trusted with his valuable quarter. This morning's gospel reading tells of two groups who had questions for Jesus. Both groups were looking for a way to override Jesus' popularity and silence him. One group was the Herodians, a band of people who supported Herod Antipas and wanted closer and better ties with Rome. They backed Roman taxation and felt that it was only right for everyone to pay taxes. The other group was the Pharisees, religious leaders in Israel who objected to paying anything to Rome, claiming that it was heresy to do so. Though on opposing sides of supporting Rome's rule, these two groups devised a yes or no question that they thought would get Jesus into trouble no matter how he answered. They asked Jesus, teacher, we know you have integrity, teach the way of God accurately and are indifferent to popular opinions and you don't pander to your students. So tell us honestly, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? These men figured that if Jesus answered yes to paying taxes to Caesar, much of the crowd would be disillusioned with him. For there were many Jews who argued that paying the Roman poll tax was an act of treason. Even handling the coinage with Caesar's image stamped on it was offensive to some. A yes from Jesus would make him a traitor to the Jews. But a no to the question of paying taxes to Caesar would make Jesus guilty of treason. A no answer would challenge Roman taxation and would put Jesus into the category of revolutionary. If he answered no, Jesus could be handed over to the Romans for trial and execution. To the surprise of both groups, Jesus asked 
to see a Roman coin before answering the question. Someone immediately gave him a coin, and he held it up for all to see, and then asked, whose head is on this, and whose title? They answered, the emperor's. Jesus said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. You see, in ancient Israel, it was understood that any item with a man's stamp or inscription on it belonged to that <coughs> man. Therefore, the coin stamped with the face of Caesar belonged to Caesar. Jesus' declaration was cleverly evasive. With it, he successfully escaped the trap laid for him. But as Jesus always is, Jesus had another <laughs> twist, another level to his response. His answer is more than just outwitting the opposition. When Jesus asked for a coin, he also asked, whose head is this and whose title? The coin, of course, bears Caesar's image and therefore belongs to Caesar. Jesus was setting the stage for another teaching moment. When Jesus says, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's, Jesus challenges the mindset of both groups. Sure, the Roman coin is all about Caesar, but Jesus is all about people. Jesus' declaration is a bold one. He reminds everyone that because we are made in the image of God, we belong to God. God's print is on each of us. Even if people are forced to pay the taxes to a king or an emperor, they do not bear the ruler's image. We bear God's image. Therefore, we belong to God. Now, there's a story that makes a powerful point. A beloved ruler needed a heart transplant. There was much concern throughout his kingdom. Thousands of his loyal subjects gathered outside of the palace, yelling and waving their hands, take my heart, O king, take my heart. Not knowing what to do, the, the king thought long and hard. Then he had an idea. The king asked everyone to be quiet. And then he told all of them that he was going to drop a feather. Whoever the feather landed on would be the one chosen to give the needed heart for transplant. The king then dropped the feather down upon his subjects from his high window. Everyone was still yelling and waving their hands, but with one difference. They were leaning their heads back and saying, take my heart, king, take my heart, king. Sisters and brothers, is that the way we respond to Jesus? Take my heart, Lord. Take my heart, Lord. Even as we shoo Jesus farther and farther away, we may be willing to give an hour or so to worship. We may work at a couple of mission opportunities. We may even offer a few dollars to Christ's work. But are we willing to give ourselves totally, body, mind, and hearts to Jesus and to his work? Are we willing to support the work of the Lord here at Poland Presbyterian Church and beyond our walls to the world out there? Are we willing to give our time, our talents, and our financial support? Do we give sacrificially to God's work? Or does God get what's left over after we take care of everyone and everything else? 
Friends, we need to hear the full impact of Jesus' message. Of course we need to pay our bills and pay our taxes. I mean, that's what we do. But as Jesus said, we are to give to Caesar what is his. But we must also give to God what is God's. And because each one of us bears the image of God, we belong to God. No matter where we live or where we work, what we know or what we do, our primary allegiance must lie with God. Our loyalties should not switch when we move out of this sanctuary and into the world. God needs to be top priority in our lives and in the lives of our families. It was a busy day in Dawn's home. Of course, with 10 children and one on the way, each day was hectic. On this particular day, however, even routine chores were troublesome, all because of one little boy. Len, her four-year-old son, was on his mother's heels no matter where she went. When she stopped to do something and turned back around, she would trip over him. Several times, she patiently suggested, suggested fun activities to keep him busy. Wouldn't you like to play outside on the swing for a while? Lynn simply smiled an innocent smile and said, Oh, that's all right, Mommy. I'd rather be in here with you. He continued to bounce happily along behind her. After stepping on his toes for the fifth time, Dawn began to lose her patience. She turned and said, Len, I want you to go outside right now. Why are you acting this way? Looking up at his mother with sweet green eyes, he said, well, Mommy, in Sunday school, my teacher told us to walk in Jesus' footsteps. I can't see Jesus, so I'm just going to walk in yours. Dawn picked Len up and held him close. With tears in her eyes, she humbly offered a prayer of thanksgiving for this gentle reminder that she should walk with Jesus. What a beautiful perspective this four-year-old gives us of giving ourselves to Christ. Friends, every day we live and every day we live is a gift from God. Like little Len, we need to practice walking in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus. We need to walk and work and make a difference in the lives of ourselves and of others. Think back to that story about the king and the feather. Do we answer God the way the people answer the king? Do we find ourselves take, saying, take my heart, Lord, take my heart, even as we sidestep our responsibilities and pull back? Are we willing to love Jesus with our whole being, to serve Christ and one another, and to walk in his footsteps? His footsteps go to the cross. And sometimes life is not easy. But with Christ by our side, we don't walk alone. When confronted by those Jewish leaders, Jesus said, Give, therefore, to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. What are the things that are God's? We are, for God's image is imprinted on each one of us. Friends, we are created by God. Everything we have ultimately comes from God. And at our last breath, we return to God. Celebrate this with gratitude and give generously of your time, your talents, and your money to support Christ's work here at Poland and throughout the world. You'll be surprised at what happens when you remember that you are God's child. Amen and amen.